It's Crazy Chris with the Pantheler 20 Minute Power Hour, where we give you 20 minutes of pit sports talk, bloated out to an hour with commercials for plumbers and funeral homes and basement remediators and all kinds of other businesses looking to take advantage of your misfortune. Shrink it back down to 20 minutes because we don't actually have any sponsors and give you the hottest pit sports takes you can handle, like this pitch to build a stadium in the northern suburbs to finally get a recruit from Pine Richland, or this pit can't possibly put enough tarps in the stadium to make an FCS crowd look good, or this Pat Narduzzi should not get too involved in naming a starting quarterback because once you do that it's a slippery slope toward taking full accountability for your football program but today we've got the biggest sports stock cliche of all time it's mount rushmore that's right we're taking the topic over to pit basketball talking about the mount rushmore pit basketball players in the 21st century i'm so excited you're so excited we're all pumped up it's a pentelar 20 minute power hour right here youtube.com slash pentelarcom Holy cow. All right, so my headphones aren't even plugged in. Let me get this out of here. Take the hat. We don't need a hat, right? Oh, well, bad hair day. Maybe we'll keep the hat on. We'll keep the hat on to stay at least a little bit in our uh, sports talk limp biscuit phase. It's the morning pit. It's youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. I'm Chris Peak from pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. And I figured if we're going to do a Mount Rushmore episode of the here in the morning pit, I had to at least acknowledge the fact that we're dipping into the most cliche of sports talk cliches in doing so. But what what can I say? It's a topic that's been on my mind. It's something I've wanted to talk about. And so I said, well, we're going to have to talk about it in the morning pit. But at the very least, we can make a joke out of it before we dive in to actually talking about it seriously. Um, or at least as seriously as we talk about anything here on the morning pit on youtube.com slash pantheleric.com. You know the things we always ask you to do. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantheleric.com. That way you won't miss any of our pit video content, these daily morning pit videos that we have Monday through Friday, our weekly live show that we do every Wednesday night, usually at 8 p.m. Last night, uh, we went a little bit later due to some uh, scheduling conflicts, but it's real fun. We sit down and talk pit sports for an hour with you. It's me, it's Jim Hammett, and it's you. And and you get into the uh, chat screen there off to the right, you post your comments and your questions, and we read them and react to them. If you do it during the morning pit, um, you can you can post your comments over there. And maybe I'll reply to it later in the day. But during the live show on Wednesday nights or the post game shows that we do as well, you can post your comments over there and we'll read them live. And we'll kind of, you know, it'll be interactive. It's back and forth uh, like a talk show or like a call in show almost is really kind of what it is. Uh, and, and it's a lot of fun. It's fun to have those conversations with you guys. I say something stupid or uh, Jim says something insightful and you, you want to react to it, you want to respond to it. It's your opportunity to do so. We do it every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. right here on youtube.com slash pantheleric.com. And, of course, uh, we also have our post-game shows. We won't have one after the Boston College game, but all the games after that, everything away from home, we will have live post-game shows pretty much as soon as the game ends. ACC tournament games, NCAA tournament games, NIT games, wherever they end up. Um, certainly the ACC tournament games will be live after those. And then wherever they end up after that, we'll be live after all of those games. And those post-game shows are some of the most fun things we do. So certainly look forward to those and hope you can be a part of it. Hope you can join us to uh, be a part of that conversation. We really enjoy it. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of it, like these videos and subscribe youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. Uh, and then of course the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You can find it all at pantherlair.com and message boards to interact with hundreds and thousands of other pit fans. There's a lot of hot pit sports takes on the message boards at pantherlair.com. And some of them you can, uh, agree with some of them you can disagree with some of them you can just ignore, which is always an option. Don't, don't forget that. It's always an option that there's a topic that's not interesting to you. You don't have to participate in it. But most of the topics on the message boards at pantheleur.com are pretty interesting because it is, the uh, I think, the best online collection of pit fans that you're going to find. It's a chance to hang out with them all day, every day. Panther-lair.com. And, of course, it's not just message boards. We have a lot of coverage and content, a lot of stuff from uh, pit spring camp. It's been happening in the South Side. Started this week, Monday, Wednesday, and then they'll have another practice tomorrow. Then they take a week off for spring camp, spring break, excuse me, and then come back and go through the next four or five weeks of spring camp leading up to the the spring game on April 13th. Uh, but then we also have a lot of coverage of the basketball team. You don't want to miss any of that. So make sure you're tuned in. Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com for the Pitt sports coverage. So like I said, we're doing a Mount Rushmore episode today. And it really is like the most cliched thing you can do. 
I, I mean, like in terms of like sports talk cliches, there there isn't much that goes above and beyond the Mount Rushmore cliche. But oftentimes, there's an interesting conversation to be had uh, about you know with Mount Rushmore type of stuff. You know, like I think if you did a, a pit football Mount Rushmore, you know who's on that pit football Mount Rushmore. And I almost don't want to say my thoughts on it because we're gonna get a bunch of comments there of people disagreeing. But I mean. Fitzgerald, Dorsett, Freilich and Green, uh, Aaron Donald might might make a case for that. To me, Larry Fitzgerald never gets left off. To me, Tony Dorsett never gets left off. And I have a hard time leaving Bill Freilich or, or Hugh Green off. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of great players that have played for that program, and it's hard to leave anybody off. But I think you know you could start there. We can have a whole other conversation. Let's save that for the summer when we're really short on topics. But right now, I'm more interested in pit basketball, not just a Mount Rushmore of pit basketball, but a Mount Rushmore of pit basketball in the 21st century. And and I want to narrow it down to there because I think it's a frame of reference that we all you know we have some we all have some context with, we all have some familiarity with. Uh, for the most part, I, I think you know the people who watch this. Uh, these videos watched pit basketball in the 2000s and the 2010s and now into the 2020s as we enter the third de- or we're not enter jeez we're like halfway through the third decade of uh, this century which i mean i might have to take a break and just go think about that for a little bit the fact that we're halfway through the third decade of this century um but i mean you know we're looking at roughly like 25 years of pit basketball in this century and the Mount Rushmore of pit basketball in this century. And and the, the, the question that inspired me to go down this road, the the, the thing that made me really dive into this topic or start thinking about it or decide that it was, you know, worth discussing on a, a morning pit episode started with the question of is Blake Hinson on that Mount Rushmore? You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're at a point right now, I, I think, you know, and, and I decided I should talk about this now, just in case he goes out on Saturday against NC state and lays an egg, but I mean, he's fresh off just another incredible performance, um, you know, against Florida state. He played really well at Boston college, had like the quietest 19 points you're going to ever see. He had the 41 point game against Louisville. I mean, he's averaging since that Duke game, uh, the, the win at Duke when he shot seven of seven from three, he's averaging 19.7 points per game. And, and shooting almost f- like 45 or 50% from the field and 45 or 50% from three. I, I mean, he is playing at a ridiculously high level right now. And so I figure the buzz is about as great as it's ever going to be for Blake Henson, although I'm not counting him out of increasing the buzz with some you know heroic performances in the ACC tournament or beyond. But the buzz is pretty high right now. So I thought this would be a time to talk about it. it you know, you always want to talk about these kinds of things when you're in the heat of the moment, right? You, you don't want to have to, you don't want to wait until you can pull back and take a, a broader view and have, have more context and background. You want to be in the heat of the moment when you have these kind of conversations. So Blake Hinson, is he on the Mount Rushmore of pit basketball in the 20th century? But then as I considered that question and I started thinking more about it, I kind of realized like, well, hold on. Like Blake Hinson, all right, we can discuss Blake Hinson's merits as being part of the Mount Rushmore, but who else is there? Now, I mean, like, not not just to ask, like, oh, is there room for one more, but to ask who else goes on that list? You know what I mean? Who else is part of the Mount Rushmore? Like, who are we comparing him to, or who are we put, potentially putting him in a group with on that Mount Rushmore pit basketball in the 21st century? And this is where I, I think... It's the biggest, you know, the bigger question. I know I put the headline here is Blake, Blake Henson, you know, on the Mount Rushmore or whatever I said. But I mean, there's a bigger question uh, or another question I think you have to start with of who is on that Mount Rushmore? Who are the other obvious candidates? Like, like I said, with football to me, like Fitzgerald and Dorsett, I mean, th- those are for sure guys. Like we can, we can haggle Bill Fralick versus Aaron Donald or Hugh Green or whoever, but like those two guys, one in 33 to me. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald's maybe the greatest college football player I've seen in my lifetime. Um, in 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 my view, maybe I'm overstating that a little bit. Again, I don't want to get too far sidetracked on the football side, but I mean, like those two guys to me are absolutes. So who are the absolutes of pit basketball in the 21st century? And this is what gets interesting because before we even consider Blake Hinson's candidacy, I got to tell you, there's only two absolutes for me right off the bat 
Yeah, I mean, so I guess I'm saying there's plenty of room for Blake uh, and somebody else. We got to figure out who that is. But to me, there's two absolutes right off the bat. If you're talking about Mount Rushmore or Pitt basketball in the 21st century, the two guys that are definitely there. Uh, and see if this was real sports talk, we would take a commercial break right now, but we're not. I, I don't think we are. I hope YouTube didn't insert an ad right there. The two guys, it, it, Brandon Knight and Dewan Blair. Like, period, point blank, no questions asked, not even a hesitation. You asked me to name the two most important pit players of the 21st century, both in their ability on the court, what they represented, and what they meant to the program. Those two guys, boom, boom, right off the bat. And and I'm, I, I can't order them, uh, although if I did, it would probably be Brandon Knight first because of what he meant, not just on the court, but in terms of what he meant to the team and the program. But I mean, Dewan's not far behind. Those two guys to me are absolutes. And and they're absolutes for a few reasons. Number one, they were great players on great teams that enjoyed great success. You know, like there's, you, you have to start there. You know, you can't have, um, you know, you, you, have, you have to have that. You have to have that as a baseline of great players on great teams who enjoy great success, right? Um, or just great players who enjoy great success. You, you have to have that as a baseline. And, and Knight and Blair had that. But they went beyond. They went beyond because Knight and Blair both very much represented their teams and represented the spirit of their teams. And they were the embodiment of their teams and what made their teams great. I mean, you could make a case, and, and I, I have, and I would, and I will continue to, that Brandon Knight is the face of Pitt basketball's resurgence at the beginning of the 21st century. And, and there was some success when Ben Howland first arrived, but Brandon Knight was really the guy. He was the face of that team. He was the face of the program. And as they started winning and as they won the Big East and as they started marching to the, the Sweet 16 and all the success that they enjoyed in those years, Knight was, was the face of it on, on the court. I mean, obviously there's the coaches on the sideline, but on the court, Brandon Knight was the face of that success in the face of that team. And he wasn't just a team representative, but his spirit and his toughness and his approach and the way he handled himself on the court symbolized, I thought, what the whole team was. You know, and and, and it kind of he he embodied that team's spirit. The toughness, the physicality, the defense, the refusal to back down. Like and and, and he's not the only guy who embodied that. Certainly Jerome Brown, Julius Page, you know, you can run down Chevy Troutman. I mean, there were great players on those teams who embodied that, but nobody did so more than Brandon Knight. He was the guy. And so that's why he's an absolute. And a lot of that applies with Dewan Blair as well. And, you know, you, you could have a long discussion about whether Dewan Blair was even the best player on his team. You know, you could have a discussion of Blair versus Young. You know, I, I think we, we sometimes get into these, uh, if you're going to start a, you know, if you're going to make a starting five uh, with pit players from the 21st century or from, you know, the 2000s or whatever, who, who's who's your first pick? And some people will take Young and some pe- people will take Blair. Some people will take Knight. Some people will take LeVance Fields. I, I, I think you, I would probably say um, Sam Young was, the best overall player on that team, that Elite Eight team. Uh, but Dewan Blair, though, embodied the spirit of that team. He wasn't the only player to embody the spirit of that team, but he embodied it and, and was a face of it and was a sort of personification of it more than anybody else on that team, I think. Um, when you look at who Pitt was, what they were, what they did, how they approached every game, how they approached every possession, how they approached every opponent, Dewan Blair sort of sums it up. This like, I mean, the, the, there's the toughness, um, the the physicality, you know, which which a lot of the which those earlier pit teams had, but that pit team, that 0809 team, and even the 0708 team had a certain joy in like breaking your nose, <laughs> you know, like and they 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 just they reveled in it and and that's not to say that knights teams didn't revel in it uh but they reveled in it as a uh, you know I, I don't know it was it was almost sort of like darker more serious or, or more sinister or something whereas dewan blair and, and the guys around him you know except for sam young who was quite stoic but i mean it, it there there was a certain joy in the physicality of that team that 0708 0809 team and dewan blair i think embodied that um, he, it, 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 I mean, there, 
you know, there's so many images you have of Dewan Blair just gleefully going for double doubles. You know what I mean? And knocking guys out and and pushing guys around and just you know uh just being Dewan. You know, and and, and he was uh, like I say, I, I think he embodied that spirit of that team more than more than anybody else. And so I think those two guys are there. But before we even get to Hinson, Hinson's candidacy, though, like if we if we want to make a case for Hinson, and I think I think we can, who's even like the third person? Like, who who else do you put on there that that rises above? And that's not to say there aren't other great players: Jerron Brown, Julius Page. Uh, Chevy Troutman, Sam Young, Levance Fields, Carl Krauser, you know, Brad Wanamaker, Lamar Patterson, Justin Champagny, you know, Jamel Artis, the guys last year, Nelly Cummings and Jamarius Burton, even if Cummings was only here for, for a year and Burton was only here for a couple years. I mean, those guys embodied it, you know, but like who rises above the rest? Who stands out that you would say, yeah, they go on the Mount Rushmore to me, honestly, I, I lean toward Fields. I think Fields might be the guy because, like, again, he had that 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 spirit that defined those teams. And, and he had <coughs> Brandon Knight's just general, like, I'm going to run this team and we're going to kill you and there's nothing you could do about it. And if you try to do something about it, I'm going to kill you even more. You know, I mean, he was deadly. He was clutch. He was he was Mr. Big Shot. And, and you know what the best thing is about LeVance Fields? They honor that 0809 team earlier this season. And Fields comes out and he's a t-shirt wearing an image of him making that shot against Duke at Madison Square Garden. That's who that team was. To walk out and wear that shirt. That that's who they were. And Fields, I, I think, embodied it uh, as much as anybody. And so I think I would actually put him and like was Sam Young a better player? Was Julius Page or, or Jerron Brown or this or that? Yes, but LeVance Fields was a really good player. And I think even more than Carl Krauser, he embodied a certain spirit of pit basketball at that time. And so that brings us to Blake Henson. Oh, and, and Fields just happened to be the floor general, the point guard for a team that made it to the Elite Eight. So that brings us to Blake Henson. And I think Blake Henson would be the fourth guy I would put on there. And that's not necessarily to rank them. And I'm just saying, like, I think I would put Henson there with Knight and Fields and Blair. And it, a lot of it is the things that we've talked about. I mean, he's a great player on the court. You know what I mean? You, you start there. Um, he is a great player. He's, you know, he had, what, the third highest scoring game in pit history. He now set the pit record for three-pointers made in a single season. He set the pit record for three-pointers made in a game. A great player who who had as much to do with Pitt's resurgence last year and continuation into this year as any other single player. Nelly Cummings had a lot to do with it. Jamarius Burton had a lot to do with it. Blake Henson had a whole lot to do with it. And carrying it over to this year when Pitt went to Duke and Pitt went to Virginia and won in places that Pitt has not won in a long, long time. And won because, largely, because of Blake Henson's performance and effort. I I think he's the most important player of this resurgence under Jeff Capel. And I think, you know, even beyond like the threes and what he's able to do on the court, it's embodying a certain spirit. This team has Blake Henson's personality, that ability to to be loose, to be fun, to play, to, to enjoy basketball, to love basketball. Um and then also be willing to, you know, cut your heart out, you know, and and nail a dagger. There's a certain mix of of a killer instinct and and sort of gleeful love of hoops that Blake Henson Blake Henson embodies, and I think the rest of the team picked up on it last year. And I think he is, if there's been one biggest impact on those younger guards, I, I think it's that. I think he's picking up on the way Blake just genuinely loves what he's doing, but doesn't that that doesn't allow him to be unserious about it. And he goes out and and kills teams. And, you know, just like LeVance Fields had the, the shirt with him hitting the shot against Duke, 
I hope that one day, 15 years from now, Blake Hinson comes back to pit at halftime wearing a shirt with him standing on the scorer's table against Duke. You know, like, it's that same kind of thing. It's not just what they do on the court, although they are some of the best players in pit history, but it's also what they mean to the program, how they how they embody the pro, the spirit of the program, how the personification of who their teams are. And then you throw in, you know, what Pitt has been able to do the last two years, largely on the back of Henson's contributions. I, I'm putting him on it. I'm putting him on the the uh, the Mount Rushmore of Pitt basketball in the 21st century. What about you? I think we can have a good conversation about this. I think it'd be fun to talk about it. So let me know what you think. Is is Blake Henson on the Mount Rushmore of Pitt basketball in the 21st century? Or and are the other guys Brandon Knight, Dwan Blair, and Levance Fields? I think they are. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know on the message boards at pantheloar.com. Let me know on Twitter or anywhere else you want to tell me. And I'm an idiot. I'm certainly an idiot for the way this episode opened, but hey, we got to have fun every now and then. No disrespect to our friends in uh, Sports Talk Media. Listen, if if there's somebody in Sports Talk who happened to watch that opening and thinks, uh, try, I'm not making fun of you. It's the other guy. I promise. Um, all right. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, to youtube.com slash pantherlair.com and check out the website panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com we've got the morning pit mailbag tomorrow so make sure if you have a question about pit football pit basketball pit recruiting or anything else you post your question in the thread on the between fifth and forbes message board and we will answer as many of those as we can thanks so much for tuning in today we appreciate it like and subscribe and we will catch up with you tomorrow for the morning pit mailbag right here on youtube.com slash pantherlair.com